What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is Robert. In this video, I'm going over how I was able to start my Airbnb business with minimal information. Therefore, I think it's a great way for beginners to learn and look at how I was able to do it with such minimal information and how I was just able to jump into this, me not having any prior background in business or anything like that, jumping into this and being able to do well with it without much experience and much knowledge. And I think this is gonna be great for anyone trying to start. I know I started with more of a minimal approach and you can do the same. For the people out there who want more of a step-by-step -step layout on how to start and what actions you need to take to get started, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I will get in contact with you and we can move on from there. So in this video, I'm being interviewed by a friend of mine, Jonathan Zamora. We actually connected through Instagram. He was one of the first people to reach out to me and uh, sub to my YouTube channel when I started back in June of 2018. And we kind of kept in touch since then. Jonathan's in the Shopify space. And the thing is with, with Shopify drop shipping, people who are into that game, you know, they are in arbitrage. They are in an arbitrage market where they're able to connect with a supplier and have a lower cost for the product than they are selling it for online. They profit the difference between what they buy the product for and what they sell it for. With an Airbnb business, like with the rental arbitrage Airbnb business, it is essentially the same thing except for you're now in real estate and you're able to profit the difference between a long-term rental market price and the short-term rental market price. I have had a few people asking me how to pronounce my last name and I thought that's, I thought that's kind of funny. So if you guys do stick around till the very end, uh, you will hear me say it. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Let's say the rent is $800 on a long-term rental market. With short-term rentals, you can generate twice or triple that amount in a typical market. And that way you're able to lease the property for any given amount of time and then profit every month on top of that lease. So you're essentially drop shipping yeah, houses. So you, yeah, it, I was comparing. So like drop shipping is retail arbitrage and what I'm doing with Airbnb is rental arbitrage. Yeah. So arbitrage is essentially identifying the price differences in markets mm -hmm. and profiting that difference. And if you're able to do that successfully, like you will make money. Right, yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a crazy business model and yeah. I knew that you were kind of doing it, but then I kind of revisited it a little bit later on when I saw an article about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, that is so insane. Like, how is this legal? And is yeah. that like an, at all a concern? where it's like, okay, you're not only battling like the market, but then mm -hmm. you're also battling some sort of regulations that can be pushed through yeah. through different like states. No, absolutely. So a lot of cities have been cracking down on this business model. And that is one of the downsides. You always have to look at, you know, potential things that can go wrong in a business when you start it. So obviously this is a relatively new market and cities don't know how to handle that. So they have been regulating it and some cities have actually banned uh, rentals completely, like short-term rentals, they banned them completely, but there are ways to get around it. So for instance, if you are in a county or in, in like city limits that have banned, uh, you know, short-term rentals altogether, you can always go to like a 40 minute drive to like a, a surrounding suburb or a town right outside of, you know, where you live. And they probably won't have those regulations in place. So there are ways around it. And like he said, you know, regulations are becoming a thing. The cool thing is on Airbnb, uh, they give you permission to list a property without owning it. So that's okay. how this is, is a yeah. thing, right? It makes the possibility like so much more real because in the terms of service, they give you permission as long as you have written approval from the landlord or the owner of the property. Okay. That's so. Yeah, it, it's definitely an, an interesting model. So kind of walk me through what that process looks like going from being like, okay, this is something that I want to start. Yeah. How difficult is it to actually find that first property and kind of get the whole thing moving? It's it's difficult. So like with anything, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not right. going to happen quickly. And I think a lot of people that hear about this, they think, yes, I, I can do it, which in reality, everyone can do it. It's possible. Uh, it's going to take a lot of effort and you're going to have to deal with rejection quite often. Yeah, so of course. my experience with it, you know, I heard of the opportunity and I thought- How'd you hear about it? I, I listen to podcasts, you know, okay. just in my spare time. I think it's a great self-development I think everyone, absolutely yeah, agree. everyone absolutely should listen agree. to podcasts. So I was listening to a podcast and the person being interviewed was Brian Page. Okay. The guy's, I think, probably one of the, the more influential people in the Airbnb space. Okay. And, you know, he was talking about it. Um, it was a Mike Dillard podcast. I don't know if you listen to Self Made. No, Man. I don't. It, it's just like a self development podcast. And so I heard the idea and, you know, it was like, dang, that's actually a really good idea. And the reason I was willing to take action is because I enjoy Airbnb. My first Airbnb experience was in Hollywood. So we stayed, really? yeah. Okay. So we stayed in, uh, we were visiting California and we stayed in. I love uh, Hollywood. Yeah. So we stayed in an apartment there and it was such a cool experience. And it was my first time using the platform. So I was like, dang, this is actually something that is making this guy a lot of money because we paid, I mean, a pretty, a yeah, pretty I steep mean, price course, for that nightly rate. And then, you know, from there, I was introduced to the opportunity through the podcast and I was like, dude, I'm going to give 
this a try. Once I had, you know, thought about this for about two to three weeks that, you know, it was on my mind. I would go to bed thinking about it. I was like, okay, I have to do something about this. I'm not just going to, you know, let this opportunity pass me by. Mm. And I decided to go out and start finding rentals. And that's the next phase. Like, you know, after you're open to the idea of starting this, you have to go actually like, you know, make things happen. And so, so are you like cold calling them or are you just like, what I would do, what I would do, I would ask, you know, people who have the property out on the market for rent, I would drive by houses. I'd see the front side in the front yard. You see that all the time. Right. It's kind of like a, like a mom and pop investor. They have, you know, the, the sign thrown up. Okay. And I would go on Facebook market, Craigslist, like anywhere where I'd see rentals that were appealing. And right off the bat, my first mistake was not even doing any market research. I was trying to find a property. That was like, yeah, my didn't, initial didn't matter what yeah it was. I was just trying to find something and actually got rejected pretty hard. And, you know, <laughs> most people would not like that rejection, but yeah, you know, yeah. I was like, dang, I learned a lot from this meeting. So yeah, I would, I would just ask to see can you, the property. Can you tell me a little bit about like what that rejection was? Yes, absolutely. So I would call and, you know, can I see the property? Can I have a tour? Okay. So most, most people will give you a tour. Some people will say no, like mm-hmm. go look through the window or something, depending <laughs> on who you're dealing with, but it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So when they would show me the place and I would present the idea, but the thing is I didn't have any knowledge on how to you know, give them this pitch. It's a pitch essentially, it's like a sales pitch. Right, right. So you, you're wanting their permission to use their money, to use the property to make money. And I had no idea what I was doing. I had not done any prior research on like the presentation. <laughs> How it actually, yeah, yeah. So rejection was obviously coming my way. <laughs> Just flat out no's were like the first thing. I, I, saw, like, I saw a video that you like had presented to like a, an apartment complex mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Was that the one that was like, kind of like the bigger, like, oh no. No, no, no. So that was, that was later on. But like my, my first one was like, I mentioned the word Airbnb and they're like, no. Just, just, just completely flat out. shut me out. And I had no way of countering that. I had no information. I wasn't prepared how, to. How often are you going to run into that with this business? Model? I think quite often, simply because a lot of the people that you may be talking to don't know what it is you're talking about. So, mm. you know, and there's a, like, there's a like, concern of it possibly like getting a, more damage yeah, than just yeah. having a single Well, the tenant. thing is, I think for the most part, people just aren't familiar with what Airbnb is. So, you know, there's timeshare, like there's all these weird, like real estate scams. or There's weird yeah. structures. With so the pe- people always uh, tend to stay away from that just because like they don't know what it is. So, the first, I think the first two people I spoke to, they just didn't know what Airbnb was mm. and maybe they kind of heard something about it, but I definitely think it's more about like them not having awareness of, you know, what it is. Right. And the person who actually let me finally sign my lease was an Airbnb customer. Like he used oh, right. Airbnb okay. like frequently for his travels. And was it immediately just like flat out of the gate? Like, yes, no problem. Yes. So for him, um, he was in a situation where he kind of needed tenants, okay. you know, so in his mind you know like he was open to hearing me out because he i said airbnb he's like oh i love airbnb and i I love i love the experience i get when i stay with the rentals and stuff so that really opened up the conversation a lot Uh, for me i had six people say no before i finally got a yes okay so flat out my first couple meetings were just i think they're just me getting you know ready for for what was to come and for anybody looking to start that i think you know you'll have to go through those rejections i always tell people like wanting to get started like just go even if you don't think you're going to make it happen, just go like, get warmed up, present your idea, like present the opportunity to yeah, these people. Yeah, all, all of those no's are going to move you closer to yeah, that yes, exactly. because then you have that preparation. You understand what that pitch needs to look like. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I definitely understand that. So what is a good fucking question? Well, you were, you were asking me like, you know, the, the, the process. So, you know, yeah, I got the idea. I pitched them and... Uh, oh, okay. So I have, I have a question. Okay. So, so you have that property that you got after the six, seven try. Mm-hmm. What are the what are the numbers? What do those look like as far as how profitable is this business? And then okay. what's the workload? Okay, so to dive right into the numbers, it depends on the rental market that you're in. Obviously, mm-hmm. San Francisco's rent is tremendously higher than rent where I live in the Midwest. Right. So, in comparison, like San Francisco, you have rent for thirty five hundred dollars a month on mm-hmm. your typical like you know whatever rental. In Springfield, where I live, is actually like eight hundred, which eight hundred is on the high end. The thing is, in a place like where I live, there's not very many people hosting. Mm-hmm. So it's it all depends on the market, and if you do enough market research, you'll be able to identify these these numbers. How hard which, is it to manage something that's like really far away from you? So for me. I do travel quite often mm. and the, the listing is running itself. So right now, like I'm managing the listing in a way and I'm mm. not there. I think if you have a proper structure with the team, like you have a cleaning service that you trust mm. and for, right for the time being, I manage all the check-in and checkouts with my phone. Okay. So it's, it's not very difficult to manage remotely. I'm about to be in Costa Rica for two weeks and That's awesome. you know, like we've done travels where we've been gone for like a month at a time mm-hmm. and it's really effortless just as long as you have somebody that you trust to get in there and clean the property. So 
if you're going to get started with this, the initial work that it takes to get started is listing the property okay. and getting all the furniture ready for that, you know. And do you fill it up with your own furniture? Yeah, so you can find fully furnished apartments and okay. there's plenty of options out there. Or you can, you know, in my case, I actually went ahead and furnished everything. I had to buy literally everything you'd need for a house. Like you'd be living in a house. Like what, what do you think you'd need for that? You know, like amenities, like just comfort, Every, everything, I mean, everything, everything top to yeah. bottom. Yeah. So I went and purchased all that and it took me about two weeks of me just every day just trying to get buying, everything together. Just yeah. buying things. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was really kind of stressful My because I had, I had signed my lease and I, I paid the security deposit the first month's rent, mm. all that. And, you know, I was like, okay, I need to get this property live. Like I'm, I'm right, right now I'm losing money every single day that, you know, mm. I don't have this property on Airbnb and home away. So it was pretty stressful time period. And I, I think there's ways to, I mean, approach that more structured manner. I, I was kind of just running around. Like, how, how would you go about it now? Since you, since you so have gone through that now first deal. I would honestly have the furniture ready before I, I signed the lease. Yeah. Okay. So you can locate the furniture, however you don't want, you know, finance it on mm -hmm. a cashback credit card or something like however you'd want to go like lease the furniture, just have that ready because I was looking on Facebook market for like, you know, can I, <laughs> just, can I get this in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like looking. So getting the property listed did take me two weeks. You know, once that the property was live, I made, I think $700 in two weeks. So okay. that was my first month, no experience, no optimization, nothing, just me flat out listing the property, mm. how, how it was. And whenever you first get started on Airbnb, mm -hmm. you're not like, you don't have any reviews or anything. Yeah, does you, you does it help as you start to kind of get Absolutely. more reviews? So I've noticed that once you have like your first guest book, yeah. you will just get bookings continuously from there. So it's just a matter of getting your, your property ranking like with SEO and, and strategy, obviously with websites, you know how it works. SEO is a concern. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really? And the thing is right now, not very many people on Airbnb as hosts are even aware that that's a thing mm -hmm. like what's seo you know, do you do any other marketing besides just like kind of working no that? that's that's the best part so for right now airbnb takes a three percent fee from like the booking price okay so let's say you book for a hundred dollars a night they'll take a three percent fee and that includes all marketing all you know they're pretty much bringing the money to you wow and i think it's a fair exchange it's a really low yeah low, that's low, really really low, really low yeah. uh, cost for what they're offering so is that including the transaction fee as well mm -hmm. everything wow. yeah so well, they'll, they'll charge a service fee to the guests, but that's not coming out of your pocket. Right. So as far as the time allocation goes, I mean, just to kind of touch back on that, you said that, you know, you were in Costa Rica for two mm -hmm. weeks and you were, you know, able to do all these other things while the rental was yeah. still going up. Yeah. How much time are you going to have to spend per property once you have that team built out? So with, with the team built out, you really don't have to spend any time there because essentially if you have a cleaning service on staff, so the way this works, like when we hire a cleaner, we hire like a homemaker who is typically already doing that, you know, in like their schedule. So we'll give them our calendar and say like, hey, we have guests coming, uh, checking out this day. And like, so we have like an eight hour time frame between check-in and check-out to where we can get in there and clean the place. Okay. We typically do that ourselves. And the way we've, I've, I've optimized this is you have multiple, obviously multiple linens, multiple towels. Like, right. so you just go in there with the clean stuff switch it right out and mm -hmm. you get out of out of the property with the dirty linen and stuff and then for right now we do that me and my wife do that ourselves so okay. it's something that i think is worth it for us because we, we charge a cleaning fee so our cleaning fee is 50 dollars right now and we keep that we pocket that every That's single nice. booking so you know it's just an increased revenue and it takes us about an hour to get in and out Okay. So that's like a complete sweep of the place, like just flipping it. Yeah, you know? making sure everything's perfect. Um, yeah, so it's really not that much time. When you think about it, we focus on longer bookings. Mm -hmm. So we typically tend and to- By that you like, mean just people who are gonna stay for a yeah, week, two yeah. weeks? Yeah, so we, we focus on you know two days or more. At the beginning, we would have uh, single night bookings you know, consistently, like back to back, and that's us being in there like on a daily basis, right. pretty much cleaning the place. So that's something that you know I've, I've improved on with time as, you know, business improved right and we really like let's say on a month we have five bookings that take up the whole calendar that's us being in there for like five hours a month yeah like not bad to at make all. that money what does it look like as far as like the vacancy like how often do you have days that just aren't filled at all yeah so there are days that won't book i mean that's you know, that's expected but mm -hmm. um i'd say we've we've stayed over 50 percent occupancy the entire time and that's a concern wow. everyone always has they're always asking me what if I can't make rent? Like, right, because you're, you're tied to yeah, that lease. Yeah, you still so, have to pay that regardless. Yeah, obviously. And that's something that you have to understand. Like when you get started, that's one of the downfalls to this. Like mm -hmm. if you're in a market that's not profitable, yep. you're going to lose money. So yeah. it's something to be very careful with. And, you know, obviously there's ways to look into that. There's like softwares you can use to analyze markets and stuff. But I've never had a losing month. You know, since I've started, I've never went under on a month. And I think that's actually saying something mm. like somebody who's really new to the space, right? Like yeah. just coming in, my, I, I just locked in my first year. So I, I learned a lot, obviously, in that time. And the fact that I was able to just remain profitable every single month consistently 
says something about this opportunity for anyone trying to like, you know, yeah, start a business. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You have your course now where you're teaching mm -hmm. people to kind of work through this same exact process. How have your students kind of been able to adopt this business model? Yeah, so what I essentially do, I, I teach them how to walk through the process of finding a property, mm -hmm. like doing the market research, the proper market research required, and locating landlords. Obviously, this is gonna be dependent on the student, right? I can't make them go out and have meetings. Right, of, course, so, like, of course. Yeah, I just essentially prepare them for what that's gonna look like, mm -hmm. like what to and what information to have internalized, like what to say and how to fight objections, like how to, you know, counter objections mm -hmm. that come up because obviously, you know, you'll always have people like having concerns, like what if this happens? Yeah. Uh, for instance, like what if they damage the property or what if they're a sex offender? Like it's just things that <laughs> yeah, they always just have, things you know? that you don't think about whenever you first hear about yeah, the business. Yeah, problem. exactly. So, you know, you have to have an answer and like you have to be prepared mm -hmm. on how to answer that. I think that's a very important step. And once you finally like get over that first obstacle of, of locking in your first lease, I think everything else, it, it goes pretty smoothly just because you'll be making money enough to cover your expenses. From my experience, everyone I've spoken to right now, like from coast to coast that's hosting, they're all making really, really good money as far as like what, how much time they're putting in. Yeah, I, th efforts I think this stuff. business model is like really insane just because it's so scalable. Yeah. You're not having to spend all this time booking out every single person. Yeah. What do you think the long tail looks like for this business? I mean, there's so much room for growth. Yes, absolutely. What does that look like? Um, in my opinion, I think that they are completely gonna take over accommodations and like the accommodation space they already have. Mm. I think there's a statistic like Marriott has like two point something million uh, you know, rooms available on a nightly basis over like across the world and Airbnb has like 5 million. I mean, they've already like doubled their competition, which yeah. is like accommodation. So they're, they're a massive business. They grew very I quickly. I think the way it's going to work in the future, the generations that are just not growing up mm -hmm. and they're going to start traveling, they're going to be using Airbnbs more frequently. Something I've noticed in culture is like, you always have like rappers rapping about like hotels and you know, they, they'll throw that, you know, that bar with like a hotel reference, yeah. <laughs> but you have rappers now referencing Airbnbs. I don't know if you've heard songs, but I, it's something I've picked up on. So it's true, though. I mean, becoming, a lot of like hip hop artists, like you start to hear these little things that kind of like get mm -hmm. dropped, and you can really see the cultural change yeah. that like yeah. that has. So I definitely think that the long term picture of this looks really good, mm -hmm. uh, just simply because they're more affordable than hotels for the most part. Like if you look at like the value you're getting for the price you're paying, you're getting a whole place right. to yourself. For rental arbitrage, yeah. I mean, Airbnb, I think, is going to be around mm -hmm. regardless. For mm -hmm. rental arbitrage, I mean, there's the, the rules, the regulations, mm -hmm. that's gonna come with any business. Yeah. What do you think that space kind of looks like over time? Do you think it's gonna get bigger or smaller? I think it's gonna get bigger, and I'm gonna refer back to a startup that just, you know, they've, they've been in business, I think, for like about a year now. I'm not actually sure, but they're like a, a really heavily funded startup that actually they're based completely around rental arbitrage. Interesting. So, so their entire they're, business yes, model. Yes, they're called Lyric. And I think Airbnb has done like $165 million state investment for this company. Wow. So, I mean, it's something that is, I think is here to stay. Yeah. Simply because the short-term rental market will always outpace the long-term rental market. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on location, obviously, there's some markets that aren't profitable, like San Francisco, for example. Like I mentioned, they have really high rent. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to turn out you know, I don't, depend, depending like, you know, how saturated it gets with, with people joining in the space. Yeah. You know, obviously. Have um, you seen a lot of growth in the space since you like first started to now? I really have not. Not that, that's at what, all. That's so, the weirdest thing to me. Cause I was yeah. looking into this opportunity, mm -hmm. um, you know, after I kind of heard about it the second time and I was like, you know, I want to really find some really interesting people that I can mm -hmm. learn a little bit about this space yeah. from. And you were like the one that just kept popping up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, who else is in this space? And there was like a couple of others, yeah. but it's not nearly as big as I feel like it should be. It's not. And that's why I think it's gonna see like that growth curve very soon. I mean, give it a year or two. Yeah. Obviously I've been in business for a year and I've not seen much growth. There's a lot of hosts out there, but they're not scaling, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the way that this opportunity does present, like the opportunity to scale. I mean, it's so, it's so much more scalable than actually owning the property. Mm -hmm. And we were talking Absolutely. a little bit about that off camera. And it's yeah. like, if you own the property, you have to pay all of this money down where if you just are releasing it and yeah. then just putting furniture in it and be like, okay, go ahead and, you know, rent it on Airbnb, mm -hmm. you could scale it so much farther. Absolutely. So the typical, the way that, like the way this works, you know, you pay 20% down on an investment property. If you go to like a, a loan officer, you're like, hey, I want to buy this property for Airbnb. Mm. They're going to be like, okay, 20% down. That's how it works. So that ties up a big chunk of cash that you can actually use, you know, for four or five listings right there. Right. So if you have 20 grand, 30 grand sitting, you can actually scale right off the bat, like right from the start. And you will be seeing that, you know, increase in cash flow. I think it's one of the easier ways to hit six figures online. 
I, I, yeah. I say it's an online business because everything is, you know, do you deal with it directly? You're right, you're not yeah. actually having to be there. Yeah. It definitely has that potential. And right now in the space, there are people who have reached those numbers. Mm. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm looking at, like, right, my long-term goal with this is to obviously get those, you know, that multiple six-figure income of course. with it. So I'm glad that I started, you know, it's been something that has really changed my life in the way like that I look at business and look at opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, and and besides this business, I know that you are you're, are kind of like in a place where you're starting to kind of diversify where mm-hmm. you're bringing in money. Besides rental arbitrage, what are some of the other things you're focusing on? Yeah, um, I day trade. So I mean, okay. that's where I make that's where I make enough money to that's crazy, just get dude. by. I, I I respect day traders so much because yeah. that is such a hustle and grind. Yeah, it is, and it, it's something that I actually like became passionate about. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a mentor who literally walked me through like everything I needed okay. to learn. And that's where I started to make realizing I don't need to depend on a job to make money. Mm-hmm. And that really shifted my mindset with, with everything. So um, as far as like what else I'm working on to scale, obviously I have my YouTube channel, right? which is now like, you know, my goals with my YouTube channel, they sound crazy, but like, you know, I'm trying to hit like a six figure income on a monthly basis through that. It's no, it's a thousand so, percent reasonable. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's something that's very long term for me. Everything's going the way it's supposed to be. And obviously I have started my course, I've launched that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen, I've heard very great things about it, like back from my students and stuff. So yeah, student student feedback and like student results are, they're amazing. They drive yeah. you, man. And, and you know really that get for, you going. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So right now, what I really wanna focus on is actually scaling this, this Airbnb to six figures, that's it. Robert, thank you so much for doing this interview. I really do appreciate it. Can you please tell everybody from my YouTube channel where exactly they can find you and get some more information okay. on this? Yeah, you guys can just find me on YouTube at Robert Yacob, I-A-C-O-B. Just search it up. I'll, I'll, pop, I'll pop up first, yeah. So just <laughs> go ahead and uh, you can find me there or in the link down below. And all my outlets are you know, on my YouTube channel. If you guys are interested in anything I have to offer. And all the links will be yeah. below. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. It's pretty lengthy, but there are a lot of valuable bits and pieces in here. Be sure to check out Jonathan's channel, and if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I will see you guys all in the next one.